So Trump White House counsel Pat Cipollone and his deputy, Patrick Philbin, were both interviewed by the FBI about the location of those classified documents at the ex-president's Florida home. That's as part of the investigation that led to last week's execution of a search warrant at Mar-a-Lago. Right now, Cipollone and Philbin, seen there uh, during that first impeachment trial, are the two most senior officials that we know of to be interviewed as part of this investigation. Last year, when Trump left office, both men acted as liaisons between Trump and the National Archives. And as the New York Times reports, quote, Philbin tried to help the National Archives retrieve the material, but the former president repeatedly resisted entreaties from his advisors. It's not theirs, it's mine, several advisors say Trump told them. We still don't know what exactly those documents are, especially the ones labeled top secret, the ones that have some of the highest classification. That could change this week, however. On Thursday, a federal judge will hear arguments to unseal the affidavit that preceded the search warrant, which lays out exactly what documents the Department of Justice was looking for. Now, we should say the Department of Justice opposes making that document public. They argue it would undermine their current and ongoing investigation, writing in a court filing, quote, if disclosed, the affidavit would serve as a roadmap to the government's ongoing investigation. Produce, providing specific details about its direction and likely course in a manner that is highly likely to compromise future investigative steps. Adding, this investigation implicates highly classified materials. George Conway is a prominent conservative lawyer, former Republican, and he joins me now. Nice to see you here in person. Nice to be here. Um, so what do you make of the significance of the fact that the FBI interviewed these two former White House lawyers prior to the execution of the search warrant? Oh, it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, it's clear that they interviewed basically everybody who had something to do with these documents, and they had a substantial basis laid out in the affidavit that Donald Trump isn't going to get to see um, for the search warrant. So I, it doesn't surprise me at all. And um, what is interesting about it is it, it's, just, it's actually it's very incriminating. The story is very incriminating of Donald Trump. He was told, you have to give this stuff back, and he wouldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the specificity of all this. It's yeah. the repeated attempts to get it. It's Absolutely. the liaisons for the right. lawyers that, that makes it, because you can imagine a defense being like, ah, clerical error, well, right? I was, which, busy, I was busy with a coup. Right, I was, right, exactly, which, <laughs> which he's been trying <laughs> yeah, to argue. Yeah, right. um, but, but, but to lay the groundwork in this way, including this attestation, apparently, that two of his lawyers signed, Fine. telling the FBI yeah. that, and he would not be in criminal jeopardy at all, former president of the United States, if when they, he was first contacted by the, the National Archives, he said, come on down, the, every, search the place, yeah, take, 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 take anything you want, um, just let me know what it is, and uh, hopefully I'll get it back in, in, you know, from my library someday, and I'd like to, I look forward to working with you for my presidential library. And that's, that's what a normal president who made a mistake would do. Right. And that's not Donald Trump. Well, and it's also the case that that quote there brings into the, the willfulness of yes. it, right? I mean, the motive to me remains, I have to say, somewhat obscure. I mean, oh, we just no, don't know what I, it is. No, you, I, you don't think it is. I mean, I, I, the, motive, he, the motive is he's five years old. This, these are mine, my toys. He's a narcissist. He, he wants to have this stuff because it's cool to have this stuff. He wants to be able to show it off. He, want, he, doesn't, he believes he owns everything. He owns the generals across the river. They're my river. Right. I mean, my generals. Right. right? Everything's his. He's five years old. Right. <laughs> and, and so what do you think about this? So you've got, we, we now know that they've talked to uh, Philbin and Cipollone, right? right? Who have also been subpoenaed by the grand jury. Right. Um, you've got the, this filing now on Thursday. The, the, the judge is going to hear arguments. Right. You said there, he's not going to see the evidence. Not a snowball this, chance. This, yeah, this doesn't seem like right. a hard case. Why? Well, well, because first of all, you don't get this stuff in the middle of an investigation. You don't. I mean, if, if he's going to get this stuff, he's going to have to earn it by getting indicted. And maybe then he could get it. Maybe he could get it in discovery. But um, right now, you know, it, it's the, it's a roadmap to the investigations that Justice Department put in its brief. And, you know, you don't even have to go there. But this is a guy with a history of obstruction. Right. Uh, you know, the several incidents in the Mueller report. Right. Uh, you've got him uh, dangling pardons out in public. You've got him trashing on witnesses in public. And then you've got the, the recent January 6th. Exactly. Events, the phone where, call, you know, to, the the phone the call to, the, to the to the to the White House, whatever he was. And then and, and then the, you know, the attempt to reach out and intimidate. Cassidy Hutchinson. I mean, this is the last guy. I mean, even, even if there were some circumstances where you you give this stuff 
up to a criminal defendant who's being or potential criminal defendant who's being investigated. You certainly wouldn't do it to this one. Yeah, and, and we should. But know it doesn't. It just this does not happen. I mean, it's ludicrous that that, that to even suggest that the. That the, that the affidavit could be released at this point in time. Yeah, the government saying that there remain compelling reasons, including to protect the integrity of an ongoing yeah. law enforcement investigation that implicates national security, yeah. that support keeping the affidavit sealed. The fact this investigation implicates, and I thought it was interesting, highly classified materials further underscores the need to protect the integrity of the investigation, exacerbates the potential for harm if information is disclosed to the public prematurely or improperly. We should also note that his lawyer, he has some lawyer representing him on this, so I have not... Uh, seen before uh, keep track of yes he's been he's been he is a man who's gone through many lawyers um basically saying if you indict him there will be mayhem um and also saying they want to see the affidavit uh which right you know, uh, i mean you know you're in, at the one hand you're, you're making threats and you're you know you're gonna you're encouraging mayhem against the fbi i mean that's what that's what basically the, the, the trump supporters have been doing encouraging you know i mean we've, we've seen unprecedented threats to the fbi imagine what it would be to what, what's going to happen uh, to the to witnesses who are listed in the affidavit uh, it's it's just never it just it's inconceivable that they that, that this could be allowed. I'm going to ask you a question that I asked. I had Cynthia Oxley and Harry Littman on the program last night. I mean, so one way of looking at this is they just wanted the documents, right? NARA wants the documents, yeah. the FBI yeah. and counterintelli- yeah. the head of counterintelligence, yeah. and they kept trying to get them and they escalated all the way up to the yeah. search warrant to get them, right? But then that's it. Now they have the documents. There's no more. They're not going to go any further down the line of this case. Cynthia and Harry thought that was I was wrong about that. I'm not saying that's the yeah, case, I, but why? I, I don't, I, because I think he, he, he went too far. He jerked right. them around. I mean, this is, you know, again, as I said, if he, if he had just turned the documents over in the first place, that would be one thing. But then you turn some of the documents over and then you, you submit an affidavit through your lawyers that turns out to be false. You to basically defy a subpoena and... You know, he's he's showing incredible amounts of bad faith. It's like this is the one thing you can, you know, Chris Christie once said he told Donald Trump that there's no way you can make an investigation shorter, but there's a way, lots of ways you can make it longer. And yeah. this is what, like what he did in the Mueller, yeah. Mueller, Mueller investigation. You know, he engaged, you had a whole volume of the Mueller report that talks about all the things he did to obstruct the investigation. And, right. he, and if you or I had done that, we'd have been indicted. Right. And that that gets us to the final question, which is. You know, people have invoked the Al Capone for tax evasion yeah. cliche all the time. Um, the reason that they were able to do that was because it was a bla- it was black and white, right? right? They could show the money coming right. in. They could show what he showed right. the government. Boom. Right. This seems closer to black and white than many of the other things, which to me seem morally yeah, yeah. and legally more profound. It, it's sort of like, let, let, let's, just, let's say you're a U.S. attorney from the Southern District of New York and you're conducting this massive right. murder RICO investigation into right. a mob family. Right. And all of a sudden, you get a phone call from the NYPDs out in Kennedy Airport saying, hey, we just caught these people loading jewelry off a truck out of right. a warehouse. Right. And, and guess who was driving the car? The Don. Right. And, I mean, you know, you're not going to turn down that case. You're going to prosecute that case. Right. And that's why I think they're going to prosecute this one. All right, George Conway, thanks. Good to see you in person. Uh, 